Chit Chat. Hey, what's going on? It's Cole here. Um, this week we are talking about labels and um, talking about our own personal timeline of uh, labels and uh, which labels kind of stuck around, which ones did we abandon, um, how have our labels evolved. Um, I found this topic, topic pretty interesting. Um, I think Ricky mentioned that I like labels, um, which is sort of true, sort of not true. Um, I hate the way that society uses labels to marginalize people and I hate the way that um, people use labels to stereotype. I hate those parts of, of labeling and it can be problematic. Um, but I think what I like labels in a personal way and so they really helped me over the years um, to put words to my emotions and my drives and my feelings and I think that there is merit in being able to you know sort of intellectually deconstruct your gender um, with words and not just um, I guess with I don't know we, there's power when you have um, a way to describe yourself that other people can relate to as well so it's good for communication um, and I feel it's good for personal growth, but there is problems with labels. And I think if we lived in a labelless society where nothing was labeled, that would be probably ideal. But we don't. So it's sort of like I'm kind of working the system in a way for my own benefit. <laughs> so that's how I look at labels. Um, okay, so my own timeline. Um, as a small child um, to about middle school, which was sixth grade for me, uh, I was very, very masculine identified. Um, very, as Ricky actually mentioned, uh, people put a label on me as a tomboy, which is which is common. Um, and it's usually looked at as something that you'll grow out of, and, it, and it's known, it, it's typically, it's really pretty normalized, honestly. Um, I really didn't know where the fuck I fit in when I was a young child, um, middle school age. I wanted to be a boy more than anything. Um, I even talked about it, you know, and I didn't want to ever wear a shirt, <laughs> stuff like that. I love shooting BB guns and cliche things. I know that don't make someone, clearly don't make someone male or female identify, but, you know, for me, I feel like I was the most purely myself at that time. Before a whole lot of socialization happened, you know, I think that was me in my raw state, and I and I do feel, you know, that I'm fairly masculine identified, um, especially now that I've deconstructed myself. Um, so I was really isolated as a child. I I didn't really have a whole lot of friends because I didn't really interact with um, kids that much until I got to uh, school. Um, in kindergarten because I was an only child and I just hung out with my parents and their friends so I just I had a, a different vocabulary and different sort of outlooks on things so you know I didn't really you know boys definitely weren't interested in me because I was super masculine identified super dressed super masculine um, presented in a masculine way I guess and uh, I, I just didn't really have a great I, I, didn't, I had a hard time socially really um, until middle school when I got into like band and extracurriculars choir and all that and it was much better for me at that time because I kind of found my niche with the weirdos who I still love <laughs> and hang out with <laughs> um, then I guess middle school to early high school maybe sophomore year um, that's when I um, it's late middle school like eighth grade to tenth grade I suppose would be the time period I had my first like real relationship with a boy um very 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 in love with him very in love puppy love obviously as much as I could be at you know 13 14 15 um we went to church together and at this time I was extremely into um into into church and religion and being a Christian and a lot of that has to do with my um upbringing and all of that um I'm atheist now but um but you know at the time it was really important to me and and uh and everything so we met there and so our relationship was really pretty pure for the most part physically so I didn't really 
think anything was off. I didn't get that feeling. I have always had attraction to men, male-bodied people, um, as well. Um, but at this time, I had no idea that I had an attraction for, for women at all. Like, I, re I really didn't. I, um, now looking back, I see all these signs that, you know, of course I was, but I didn't. I had no idea. Really, where I grew up, there just wasn't any gay people or any, you, you just didn't even hear or talk about that. So I didn't have any reference point for, for that. Um, but, uh, so with my first boyfriend, you know, it wasn't, you know, super physical relationship. I mean, getting into like 15, the 15 realm, I mean, there was a little bit of stuff happening, but, um, you know, it was kind of hit or miss with us, you know, sometimes it'd be great. And other times I'd be really bored and I didn't understand that. And I don't know if, you know, maybe that was just the age or whatever, but, um, you know, I just basically just sometimes I felt awkward and I didn't understand why, because I really had such an emotional attachment and connection with this person. Um, so at that time I was identifying as a straight female and I really kind of tried to thin it up at that time because I was really sexual and interested in dating people. Um, and since I was identifying as straight, you know, I was trying to attract straight men. And um, so I thought that to do that, I had to be, you know, super femme or something. Um, and also, you know, everyone around me was sort of pressuring me to do that in a way. Um, my my family and friends. Um, so especially early high school, I just kind of went overly feminine with it. And I dated quite a few um, guys, you know, after my first boyfriend. Um, and I just, though it never went past a certain point physically. And I just, I really was confused on why that was. Um, so late high school, uh, 10th and 11th grade, I sort of identif started identifying as bi-curious or bisexual. Um, and the, <laughs> really the reason this even happened at this time, I think, because I really was so oblivious to sexuality and gender, was the addition of alcohol into my <laughs> life. So I was drinking pretty heavily every weekend for a while with the band people. <laughs> And this addition of alcohol sort of, I guess it lowered my inhibitions and I came to some pretty interesting realizations. I, <laughs> every time I would drink, I would want to make, I'm not talking about getting drunk, you know, I'm talking about just any amount of alcohol really. I would always want to make out with my friends that were girls constantly. Um, I was always looking for some kind of excuse to play like strip poker or like spin the bottle or whatever. Um, and eventually I did have my first, um, experience with a woman, female bodied person. And it was really natural for me physically more natural than it had been with any men. And this person wasn't someone that I was in love with. So I found that confusing and it was really good in the moment, but afterwards I did not react well to it at all. I completely freaked out and pretty much just retreated back into my, like, straight self-loathing shell, um, and I was not very nice to that person, um, yeah, so that's kind of sad, I feel bad about that, but I just, I completely lost it, I couldn't handle it, um, yeah, <laughs> so then after that, I, um, went to college at a and Commerce in 2003, and I met my first girlfriend, who I am with again now. Um, and it was incredible. And I um, felt an emotional and physical connection like I never had before. And so I started identifying as lesbian. Um, because that physical connection has always and most likely will always be stronger with me, for, with female, female body people. Um, but I really never identified with the, like, quote-unquote lesbian community. I didn't really work well with lesbians in relationships that I found for the most part. Um, and I just, you know, that's when I kind of started thinking maybe it wasn't all about sexual orientation. And um, I even went through a phase, even at that time when I was identifying as lesbian, where I would use the word gay or queer instead of lesbian, just because that just, it just felt wrong to me in my heart. I don't know how else to explain it. It just, something about it didn't 
didn't add up for me. Um, and I, I love lesbians. I mean, really, I do. And I have so many lesbian friends and, and I think they're great, fantastic, wonderful people. They can be just like any other uh, group of people. Um, but I just didn't identify with it at all. Um, so around 2008, I started identifying as genderqueer and I finally felt like, yay, this is right. This feels good. This feels fantastic. Um, but I still pretty much identified as a lesbian, um, and sexual orientation because I just didn't have, you know, you can't call yourself something if you don't know the word, you know? And that's the thing that I was finding a hard time. I was having a hard time finding a word for how I felt. Um, and it's only been since um, maybe the last six months that I have finally found something that describes my sexual orientation as well as my um, gender identity, which is pan romantic. Um, so my, I guess what I'm identifying now is a uh, pan romantic genderqueer, meaning I'm attracted to all aspects of the spectrum gender wise depending on the person and I can become romantically involved with them but not necessarily sexually with all bodies. Um, I'm absolutely open to a variety of sexual partners in terms of bodies but with male bodied people I'm normally only attracted to gay men or some the occasional bisexual man and I'm just not attracted to the energy or something of the cisgender straight guy. I don't know what it is. It's just, I guess, you know, everybody's attracted to different things. But, um, yeah. Um, so I haven't had any experience with that personally. So I, it's hard for me to say, yes, I'm pansexual or bisexual if I'm not sure about that. Um, so I feel pan romantic works the best for me since I do have no problem interacting romantically with any body. You know, it's just sex is complicated and it's really, I feel like it's biological, you know, sexuality. I, I think it's, I don't think we have a lot of control over, over that. I mean, I, I feel like I don't have a lot of control over that. Um, so that's the closest thing <laughs> that I've come up with. It's really complex and it's been a journey. Woohoo! <laughs> um, the label that I've abandoned most is lesbian, as I talked about earlier. I just, it's just totally not how I feel. Um, and I think I dislike it the most because it's how I'm perceived. So most, genderqueer is definitely the most persistent and concrete label of anything. Sexual orientation is still kind of yet to be determined. Um, and maybe it'll always be a work in progress. Maybe my sexual orientation is just fluid. Maybe it's just more fluid than other people's. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think genderqueer is, is definitely going to be something that has stuck and will continue to stick um, for the duration of my, my life. So anyway, you guys should comment. And uh, I will see you guys next week. Have a great one.